Today we are looking at a Bravura prototype trumpet that I built in 2013. And I just got this horn in on trade. I was really kind of surprised to play this horn and hear how in tune it is and uh, really just how much it lights up by design. So I'll tell you a little bit about why I designed this prototype. And then in, in the process of doing that, point out some of the features that are not normally found on a Bravura or any of our trumpets really. So let's start. First thing is this horn is marked 2013. So let's see if I can get that in view. So it was built four years ago. I think a little over four years ago. And uh, it's leap pipe three, bell nine. This designates it's a prototype. It says HT41, meaning this isn't a normal Bravura trumpet. This was a prototype for the Bravura series, and you can see it says Bravura SL. Most of you have probably never seen a horn like this because I think I only built two or three SL models. The L stands for lead, meaning it's a commercial horn or it's a lead horn. It will work in other settings, uh, but at the same time, it was specifically designed to be a great lead horn. So what is different about this horn than normal? Well, the lead pipe was a lot different on this particular horn. Even though it says lead pipe three, I designed some things in it that allowed it to sizzle more. Uh, it also has a different type of tuning slide. So this tuning slide was a thinner material than I offered on all the other Bravura trumpets. So again, it actually loses some energy here, meaning you'll have more sizzle. Uh, the bell is a nine, which is not a bell I normally offer. And what makes this bell special is that it has a 454 bell tail. So the tube inside here is smaller than normal. And that choke point helps the horn create more sizzle again. Um, let's see what other features are different about this horn. I'm looking closely at it. It has heavy three quarter inch bottom caps. We don't normally put those on our horns, even though we offer them. Uh, and I did that because we wanted extra inertia on this horn. We want to preserve as much energy as we can in the sections that aren't going to vibrate uh, or create actual sound. And then the rest of the bell and the lead pipe, we really want to be able to move even the tuning slide on this horn. And uh, the anti-nodes will literally create vibration in the tubing um, throughout those areas. So this horn came in and I thought that it was being traded as a mint condition horn, but it turns out the customer who had it before must have dropped their case and or their horn, something happened where the bell got bent right here. And that's because we don't have a brace. If we had a brace, we would have had a bend here and one at the brace and it wouldn't be as noticeable. I bent the bell back, um, but we have a couple options with this horn. One is it's gonna play just fine if you take care of it as is, even with that little bend in the bell. But if I take the bell off and completely repair it, the horn isn't gonna play right. And it's also gonna be messy where the solder marks are. So I, what I'm offering to everyone that's watching this video is if you want an amazing plain lead horn um, that we built in Minneapolis four years ago, then this is it. It's a nice finish. The horn looks and plays great. But if you want it to be absolutely perfect, I'll have to replace the bell. Uh, so the bell will come off. We'll put a raw brass bell on there and it's an $800 um, repair, which you know, if you don't want to spend the extra $800, just play the horn as is. Um, so that's kind of your options there. Oh, I want to point out one more thing I just noticed. On the receiver to the lead pipe, you can see that I marked the Venturi. See it right back there? It is 345. And those cryptic marks, uh, you can kind of see them. There's kind of these cryptic marks on the receiver, and that was a special code for me and you'll never know what it means all right so i'm going to play this horn play a few notes on it and then uh if you guys are interested please let me know because these do sell really fast especially in the price range that i'm going to offer it at i'm discounting it quite a bit because of that bent bell so a new horn like this today would sell for 4500 5000 somewhere in there <laughs> Three lead 
pipe is a fairly small lead pipe. With a 345 Venturi, it feels just like a normal lead pipe. You can put a lot of air into it, but it really shines. I mean, it's just a brilliant, huge, broad, but bright sound. It's not laser beam focused. Uh, it's got body to it. And um, I would definitely say it's not like a Shilky S42 or something like that. But at the same time, it could easily uh, have the same power and vibrancy as a horn like that. The mouthpiece I have set up right now is not a lead mouthpiece and it sounds like a lead horn. <laughs> just a beautiful lyrical horn as well so I'll play soft on it once I don't know how well my phone picks up the, the louds and the softs I know it tends to distort uh, when it's loud so I'm gonna play soft so you can hear that but it's a great all-around horn that would work for lead for sure. So we have the HT41 Prototype Bravura SL. <laughs> 